Hi, everybody. After space travel, financial services. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, you know, I'll, I'll start by saying that when great men dream, you need cash, and a lot of it. <laughs> uh, for over 150 years, that's what HSBC has been doing. It's been operating in over 86 countries. And uh, we have been fueling ideas and dreams of people like you and I and people like Richard Branson uh, to actually realize our dreams and to change and transform society. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, to show you how HSBC manages the brand and how HSBC is contributing to the societies in which it operates. The topic was the future of finance, and I've added to it, and the role of marketing. Um, generally, finance is associated with bankers. And a lot of people ask me, what exactly do you do in marketing? Uh, because decisions are primarily taken at the financial level. And I say that there is a great responsibility for marketers in financial services because we have a social responsibility to the communities in which we work. Because money is what fuels growth. Money is what improves the quality of life. And how we communicate the way we operate, our vision and values is really very important. Before I kind of talk about what HSBC does, I would like to take a few moments to talk about the present time that we live in. We are going through economic turmoil, as you read in every single newspaper. And one of the challenges that marketing has is to strengthen consumer optimism. We have half the world in a recessionary state, and the other half of the world is optimistic about its future. And these are called emerging markets. And there is such a strong dynamic and opportunity in this interaction that HSBC is seeing by virtue of its business in over 80 to 86 countries that I would like to bring to all of you today. This is an insight that we operate off. It's an increasingly interconnected world. I think the word interconnected is absolutely crucial. It is not about being just domestic. It's not just about my city. It's not about just my country. It's about my world. And how do I take up opportunities and create opportunities around the world? And the way to articulate it is ideas and capital are flowing from all corners of the globe, resulting in growth potential and the creation of new trade routes between fast emerging and developed economies. And that is the underpin of what HSBC believes is the future of finance. And the future of business goes along with it. And the future of business really is driven by capital capabilities and connectivity. You can't do business in the future in an interconnected way without having access to capital. And for that, you need strong institutions. You cannot do global business without having the capabilities. And when I say capabilities, it's not just about execution, it's about knowledge. And for that, you need an interrelationship with a number of institutions. And the third bit is connectivity. And we are seeing this in this room today, that we've got people from all over the world. And I see this as I work in Latin America, and I work in the Middle East, and I work in Europe that the peoples of the world are everywhere, and there are no national boundaries, and therefore their opportunities are not limited to domestic environments. So the focus of HSBC's marketing strategy is really about creating brand optimism. And the way we do it, and you've seen this in our communications over the years, is unlike most other brands, financial services brands who generally talk about products and services. We tend to focus more on the ideas, and we focus on how those ideas can become reality. So our communication has been around conversation starters on the future, 
and global connectivity. If you look at this image, it's, it's really a, a, an interesting demonstration of how marketeers at HSBC think. So we think about what are the issues that the world can leverage to grow. And then we say, how do we communicate that across various touch points? So this is not really a print ad, it's an idea. And the idea is around South-South trade being the norm rather than novelty. And then we say, if that is the idea, how then I, do I deliver the capability around it? So if you see on the right-hand side, you will see uh, some content around trade connections, you know, tra trade connections report, the Southern Silk Road. These are basically bespoke uh, content that is produced by our research analysts in global research. Um, they are highly regarded by corporates and institutions. What we do in the marketing space is to take that content and repurpose it to the different target audiences that we address. So if you are an institutional customer, you get a slightly more grown up version of it. If you're a retail customer, you get a slightly more uh, retail focused uh, spin on the same subject. But we are always focusing on stimulus and supporting the stimulus with content. So one of the ideas that we're focusing on is South-South trade. The other is about multinational business. It's not just about your country, as I said. Even the smallest businesses will be multinational. If you think about multinational business, the first thing that comes to mind is foreign exchange. So whether you're doing a lemonade stand business or whether you're doing uh, a, 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 a multinational cross-border you know, FMCG business, the currency is still the same. You need to think in terms of dollars, euros, and renminbi. With the rise of China, the currency of China is really very important going into the future. Similarly, the currencies of Latin America are really important. If you look on the right-hand side, you will see the kind of tools that we are attaching and associating with this type of communication. So we put together an FX calculator tool. So you can just punch in your you know, the, the, number, the, the, the quantity that you want and you can use the cross rates to figure out how much uh, uh, a certain currency is in, in another currency. Uh, similarly, we've got other stuff like trade connections and trade connections tools. There are different audiences that we address. Uh, it's not just corporates and institutions, even though I look after just the corporate and institutional space. Uh, we look at high net worth individuals who are looking to uh, investing in projects like Virgin Galactic and their ability to spend that kind of money comes from how their money is reinvested by financial institutions. So I think that is really very important and we put up content like the Emerging Markets Index Report because that's where you're getting returns on investment uh, and the Emerging Markets Stories to say why you should be putting your money investing in funds associated with uh, high growth markets. Topics of concern that the bank is supporting, uh, clean technologies. Um, it is one of the key initiatives of HSBC worldwide to support uh, programs and uh, R&D projects uh, around clean technology. Uh, so we have an interesting uh, demonstration of how waste and energy is going to be one and the same in the future. And we have similarly um, uh, research reports which talk about the climate economy and how you think about climate change risk. So what you're seeing from our communication strategy is that it's not just about putting out press ads or you know, TV commercials. What we are trying to do is an integration of an idea being proposed to the public at large and then supporting it with evidence of our capabilities and of the knowledge that we have gathered around the world through our banking business. So that you are more confident in what we are saying, rather than it being a high level wish um, uh, issue uh, that a number of our competitors think that that's the right thing to say that the society will, uh, will, will endorse and support. In the future, there will be no markets left waiting to emerge. Uh, so we are talking about China, India, Vietnam, Indonesia, Egypt, 
uh, and a number of fast growth markets. Um, it opens up the minds of people to explore. We are already traveling as tourists, but what we are trying to do over here is to fuel business, because business drives growth, and growth improves the world. Similarly, the food chain and the supply chain. We produced a report called The World in 2050. I would advise that you go onto our website and check it out. It is really fantastic. It's one of the best pieces of research that have been published on the global economy uh, in a long, long, long time. And it's been cited um, both in the corporate and institutional space as well as in, uh, in, the retail, in the retail space. Just go to our website and there's some interesting stuff in there. So that was one bit of it. The second bit of it is how do we bring all these things to life? Uh, and I would like to touch on our global airport program uh, briefly. The global airport program was essentially to demonstrate the international dimension of HSBC. I think it was a fantastic campaign that has been recognized uh, across numerous conferences and awards and stuff like that because what it does is it's the medium as message. We are present in 86 countries. Instead of my running print campaigns which say we exist in 86 countries, we demonstrate our physical presence through our airport program. So you take off in one airport, you get to see HSBC at the jet bridge, you see it as you are embarking, and you fly and you land at another airport and you get to see HSBC again. What it does for us is it, it reinforces what the brand is. It reinforces the capabilities of the brand. It reinforces the perception that various audiences have that HSBC is truly multi-locational, HSBC is truly international. This campaign evolves over time. So the creative at one point of time was about celebrating the variety and differences in the world. Now it's going to evolve to demonstrating how growth and ideas are being fueled around the world. The other area of brand optimism is about content. Um, in the past, we used to do print and television, and there was a bit of website, and we, we flirted around with getting people to contribute to our brand campaign idea. We have come a long way in kind of engaging with, with our different audiences through a content strategy. And that is becoming in increasingly important for us to demonstrate our capabilities. But you must understand, unlike other categories, financial services is highly regulated. And we run the risk of getting sued by our customers for mis-selling. And we also run the risk of getting sued by the regulator for putting out communication that might be misunderstood. So even though we have almost a thousand strong global research team around the world, it is very, very difficult for us to share that knowledge freely without being absolutely careful about what is going out in which form and how it's going to be consumed. So we use a very simple content development framework. And it's helpful for these people who are originating thought, and it also is very helpful for us marketeers to repurpose some of the complex economic observations that they make. And it starts really with the customer need. There is so much content that we produce that we need a framework to decide what is appropriate and what is not. So we start with the customer need, basically articulating who they are, what they're looking for, and why. It helps us to narrow down what is the piece of content that we are gonna work on and repurpose. The second bit that we look at is the content authority. What source is top of mind? What is their level of trust? We find this very, very important because in most cases, people go to financial news websites for content. They do not come to bank websites. 
And if we put out all this stuff you know, on our website as our property, it does not get consumed in the way that we want to get it consumed. So the, so the third bit really is engagement. How will they access it? What do we want them to do with that, with that knowledge? Uh, we recently have been talking about the rise of the Remimbi, and we found that very, very few people were actually researching the Remimbi because there wasn't enough content out there. So we went out to the FT and we went out to some of the other financial partners to create a portal where we would pull together all the content related to the Remimbi and HSBC would share its point of view in there. And the third bit is the brand credentials. What is our expertise, how are we perceived? There are certain spaces where we don't have a right to comment and we stay out of those spaces. So it's really a very simple framework. It does not need a rocket scientist to be able to explain to the originator of content what they need to do and how they need to produce it. So these are examples of some of the work that we are doing um, uh, in this whole area of uh, content development. Business Without Borders is, is, is a site that we have created. Um, and you will see right on top it says, brought to you by HSBC. The editorial is independent. It takes in feeds from the Economist Intelligence Unit. It takes in feeds from the Wall Street Journal. It takes in feeds from Bloomberg, Reuters, uh, the FT. And it creates an environment where customers who sign up are getting independent information. What HSBC does, it's created a section over there which talks about how they can take that information and turn it into actionable business-related activities. So if you're doing a business between two countries and you have found some information around what you might want to do, then you can come to HSBC to talk the business part of things. So we are not really influencing the environment, we are influencing the end-to-end -end process to say, here's the environment, and this is what the bank can do for you. This is a particularly interesting exercise in that you will never find an HSBC logo in there. This is in partnership with an independent site which talks to financial advisors on investing in various funds. And the site is called Mindful Money, and it's basically a social news and knowledge network for the investment community. We are one of the sponsors of that site, as in we pay for the site to run its business. And what we basically do is we input expert commentary. So we are one of the owners of the site, but we have absolutely no control over the editorial. We input comments as and when required. So there is an element of philanthropy over here. I think this is really very important, that financial services historically expect a return on investment which is in instant. Here what we are doing is we are investing for the long run because if these investment professionals buy into what we are trying to say over here, they will buy into the funds that we propose. So there is, there is a payback but over a slightly longer period of time. Week in China. Um, there was very little content around China in the English language uh, for the Western world. And we felt that we needed to unlock China for the Western world, for them to understand what that society is all about. So we partnered with a, a publishing house who are based in Hong Kong, who pulled together all the Chinese language articles about what's going on in that country, uh, translate it, and produce uh, a weekly publication, which you can get in PDF as well um, as online. And the circulation is 100% captive to HSBC clients only. So this is an exclusive weekly update to, to HSBC clients. And we've got 4,000 top corporates and institutions who get this and who write back to us saying, this is really fantastic. It's absolutely amazing what the, the value of the articles that come through because it helps us in our everyday conversations around investing in China and doing business with China. 
Again, there is absolutely no logo of HSBC on this product with the exception of advertising that we place over there. And it's 100% owned by HSBC. As a bank, we, we participate in a number of conferences uh, where heads of states uh, present and it is part of shaping uh, global economic policies. So we participate in the IMF, G20, the Asian Development Bank, heads of meets, and there is always coverage like this program. So what we basically do is we sponsor the video coverage by a publication called Emerging Markets. So what you will see at the bottom over here is the video clip which goes on their website and we have a link to that video through our website also. So the title of the publication is Emerging Markets and we say in association with HSBC. It's pretty much like our airports campaign, but in the online space. All that we're trying to do is to link with the asset that everybody knows and trusts, which is emerging markets, and we are associating our brand with that particular asset. So it's quite interesting. So they have a print, print version, and they've got videos on their site. And these get you know, access by chief executives, CFOs, CIOs around the world, and HSBC is always there at the forefront of topics that are of interest to them. Customer experience optimism. Uh, this is really key to the financial services sector. And it's patchy, I would say. Customer experience management across banks generally around the world is patchy. And the reason for that is we do not understand the service model. We do not understand how individuals expect service from a bank. I'm particularly proud of this is because um, I was personally involved in the development of this, this model with, uh, with a company called Brain Juicer in the UK. Uh, they are an innovation company that has been financed by, by Unilever. Uh, to measure the emotional outcome of advertising. And they were kind of playing around with this model of measuring emotional outcomes to advertising. And I attended one of these conferences where they, where they were presenting uh, this model. So we sat down and we had a conversation and said, right, if you're doing this for advertising, then why can't we do it for customer experience? And they said, well, Maybe we could, maybe we couldn't. Uh, and we said, let's trial it as a pilot. And we trialed it in London and Brazil, and it worked brilliantly. Because what we understood for the first time is that people are very bad at translating their emotions on a numerical scale. It's very difficult to say when you're angry whether you are eight angry or whether you're four angry. But it's very easy for them to say, as a consequence of a certain interaction, whether you are angry, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you're disappointed, or you're just neutral. Where it was brilliant was the application of it. Customer service is delivered at the branch. Customer service is delivered online. And it's, and it's a direct interaction. And the direct interaction needs to be managed by the individual or the system concerned. You cannot put together a service manual. And we have never succeeded, and financial services have never succeeded, because the manual can never be applied. Because individuals need to deliver service. What this has done for us is for the individual branch managers to look at it as a diagnostic. Do, does my branch, do my branch staff deliver good service? And the answer is not ambiguous because you get a clear distribution of what proportion of your customers are happy with you and what, customers of your, uh, what proportion of your customers are not happy with you. And it's for you to understand why they're not happy and to take action. Otherwise, what we used to find in the past was a big battle on the statistics and the error 
around the statistics and to dispute and throw away the fact that customers were generally unhappy. So that is what this model does. The other bit is the blue line that that uh, circles the word fear and the face fear. What we found was that um, fear is the natural state for most individuals when it comes to managing money. And that was really interesting. And what we found was we were trying to sell products to them at a time when, when they were just not in a state of mind to think about investing. When we were talking to them about investing, we were speaking a certain language that they didn't understand. So when we measured the after-event interaction, what we found was fear. Oh my goodness. So, so, so a lot of the conversations that we are developing around um, you know, how investment managers are, or advisors are talking to customers is to mitigate, to lower the level of fear before you talk to them about an investment plan. So the bank is actually proactively trying to change the way people engage with it. And the bank is also trying to change its own way of engaging with customers to deliver greater value to each other. So this is how we kind of did the pilot and it's rolling out in other countries too. So you could do it on your online, on your laptop, you could do it on the ATM, you could do it in the branch. Uh, so it's a multi-channel, uh, multi-touch point uh, approach. So in summary, before I kind of say no more, uh, just having the best products or ideas is not enough. And that's what our community have been doing historically. We've, we've shown people in suits shaking hands in power plays to demonstrate how good we are. But that's really not the point over here. We've shown uh, you know, interest rates and, uh, and, and enticements to, to, uh, for mortgages, which is not what it's all about. It needs to be, just having the best products or ideas is not enough. It needs to be adapted and enhanced to suit local conditions and regulations. As you grow international, that's really important. Just having global reach is not enough. The quality of on the ground relationships is key to gaining the competitive edge. The relationship bit is really very important. A network is no longer just about distribution and execution, but an ecosystem of relationships to foster growth by connecting ideas, capabilities, and capital. If I were to say, where does the future of finance lie? I would probably say it's that last bit, connecting ideas, capabilities, and capital. That's what's going to fuel ideas like Virgin Galactic and many other ideas that all of you will be talking about and listening to across today and tomorrow. That's what we are trying to do for all our customers, whether they be corporates, whether they be institutions, whether they be individual uh, uh, customers like you and I. Thank you.